Welcome to the Pack Cave, a place I can let my nerd flag fly. Today we're talking origins, favorite characters, TV and movies, all with a special guest. But before we do that, slap that thumbs up and subscribe to make this cosplayer cheerful. And if you don't, that's okay. But I will find you. Roll the intro. So before our special guest interview, I thought I'd try out a new segment called Trip Down Memory Lane. You're getting sloppy, Smallville. Where I unbox and show you guys some of the stuff I've had for years and years, or some new stuff I picked up at garage sales, maybe some comic book shops, just a segment to get that daily dose of nostalgia for you. you ready for a blast from your past? So let's start it off with a box from my parents' basement. Okay, so our first item comes from the year 1955. McDonald's drive through You remember. I'll get drive through We've got the Batman Forever McDonald's glass mugs. Now this one is Robin. We've got Batman. Another Batman. And our last one is Two-Face. I think my favorite's the Two-Face because his coin is like flipping through the handle, which is a, a nice little detail. But my parents got the whole set, packed it away, hoping that their son would eventually have a YouTube channel to show them off. All right, making his way down memory lane, we've got Spider-Man Rhino. Now this thing is uh, not in the best condition. The plastic is peeling up, the glue is worn away, but this is a classic character from the 1994 animated Spider-Man show. Last time I kicked your hide all over this town. Shifting onto something similar, but about 10 years older, We've got Spider-Man's Secret Wars. Now this thing also is not in the best condition. You can tell the plastic is turning a little yellow, but it's got a cool little medallion and maybe a tattoo in there. But this is from Marvel's Super Heroes Secret Wars. Oh, Spider-Man and his secret shield. That's what's in there. So the back has some really cool 80s art as well. Shows you all the characters that you can collect to complete the series. I'm really glad they've improved Spider-Man's face since the 80s, because I don't think it's proportional. Okay, so rolling on to our next item, we've got the Purple Bat Cycle. If you were a fan of Batman in the 90s, chances are you played with this, at least if you were a kid. I played with it so much that it doesn't go forward anymore. This thing used to coast down my street. Very dusty, very well played with, and this is just something that really uh, gives me goosebumps when I talk about. Each one, a memory. Let's keep the punches rolling with a Riddler Batman 1992 pocket punchers. Yes, not a, not a rock'em sock'em robots, but Batman and Riddler going at it. Another item we used to just play the heck out of, and you can kind of tell because couple pieces are falling off, but they still punch. They still punch. Jeez, they just made every kind of Batman toy possible, and I'm glad they made this one. <laughs> All right, moving on to our last item. It is a promo piece from the 1992 Marvel Masterpiece cards. Now, I think this is a promo piece because I only found two online that were sold, and they're just a little bit different looking than the actual cards. I have them up there. But anyway, we've got Hulk, Wolverine, Spider-Man, and Captain America. And then on the back, they give you like a origin of their first appearance. So Spider-Man, you got Amazing Fantasy number 15, Hulk 181 for Wolverine, uh, The Incredible Hulk number one for Bruce Banner, and huh, they didn't put Captain America's on there. Anyway, a really cool piece that uh, is just unique and nostalgic from the 90s. Okay, so now that we took a trip down memory lane, let's bring it back to the present and interview one of my favorite people on Instagram, Chris Killian with comicbook.com. We're busy killing it. Jam packed with news. Spider-Man 2 is gonna be the sh I've been following these guys for years. They drop all the latest news from casting rumors and new releases to breakdowns and interviews. And once in a while, some actual comic book news. So without further ado, I'm a little starstruck. 
I'd like to introduce Chris Killian from comicbook.com into the Pat Cave. How you doing, Chris? What's going on, Patrick? Don't be starstruck, that's silly. I've just, I've been following you guys for so long. It's just, it's an honor. Your, your cave behind you looks way better than anything that I have. So I'm, I'm actually in awe of, of all that cool stuff that you have. I wanna come visit, that'd be nice. Maybe like 2023. Well, I appreciate that. Yeah, you'll definitely have to come see it in person. Uh, which leads me to my first question. How'd you get into all this stuff? What's your superhero origin? Oh man, I, I mean, probably started, I was like four or five. And, and the first movie I ever saw in theaters was, was Batman 89. And uh, I, I, I was watching, you know, the 60s Batman show. I mean, obviously they weren't making it anymore. As, <laughs> I'm not that old. But uh, it's the coconut oil that I, you know, but no, uh, it was, uh, that's pretty much it. I, I got into Batman that way. And then I just, you know, I remember my aunt gave me, my first comic book was Wolverine number one, uh, which I still have and it's nice. it's framed and everything. And uh, and now I've just got boxes and boxes of stuff. And I, I don't know, that's, that's about how I got started in the superheroes. That's pretty much, they taught me how to read. That was, that's what I did. Nice, Wolverine number one, good book to have. Uh, so did that lead into a comic book collection or is there a certain thing that you collect in the genre? Any Anything I could get my hands on. I mean, my whole childhood, I was obsessed with comic books and wrestling. That was pretty much, and wrestling I think just stemmed as like, these were like real life superhero type characters. And so that they just seemed like a natural fit for me. So I, I was obsessed with both of those things up until, well, I guess I still am. So it's not over. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I feel like your show does a good job of mashing up those genres from uh, superheroes to wrestling to video games. Uh, speaking of that, Daily Distraction, your show on comicbook.com, Instagram, YouTube, all that stuff. How did this get started? Yeah, I was doing uh, stand-up comedy. I've been doing stand-up since 2009. And uh, I had an agent and we, you know, I'd done a couple commercials and was trying to get my name out there a little bit more. And, and comic book uh, was based in Nashville, which is where I live. They were doing auditions for hosts. And so my agent was like, I know you're a huge nerd. Do you want to try out for this? And I was like, sure. And, uh, and so I did. And I've been, I've been there with them now for four years. So, okay. Very cool. I mean, the show is hilarious and it seems like a really fun place to work. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, it, I mean, it's work. I, people, people sometimes confuse it. I mean, it's a lot of hard work, and uh, there's definitely days that I don't feel like doing it. But I mean, I it's hard to complain at the end of the day because you know all I'm doing is just BSing about you know superhero movies and stuff. So it's fun. It's definitely a cool job. Now, throughout all these episodes and all these people you've interviewed, is there a favorite one you have? Jim Carrey, hands down. <laughs> Yeah, Jim Carrey was such a, uh, I mean, that's the easiest answer for me because it was just me coming from a stand-up comedy background. And then I interviewed uh, Jim for Sonic the Hedgehog and I made him laugh twice. And it was like something nobody can ever take away from me. Like, I'll always be like, oh, like I do stand-up shows. And if somebody in the front row isn't laughing, I'm be like, you can piss off because I made Jim Carrey laugh. I don't even care about what you think anymore. Shifting gears over to cosplay, I know you dress up for your show a lot. Have you ever been to a Comic Con? And if so, what did you go as? I mean, I've been to like the smaller Comic Cons, right? You know, like the regional ones, but I've never been to the big, big Comic Con because like every year, like a comic book will be there, but I've always, because I do the daily show, I've always kind of stayed back in Nashville to kind of like do a show covering, you know, what all we're, you know, seeing at Comic Con. Um, but this this coming up year, the next time that they do a, a you know an in person Comic Con, I like to just go do the show on the floor there. Like I said, my my favorite character was probably like Batman, and then like the rest was like I would say two, three, four, and five are like Marvel guys, and um, I don't look like Batman, so I'm never gonna cosplay like Batman. I'm just not gonna do it. I'm Batman and I'm riding a T-Rex. When I think about doing cosplay, I just kind of like, well, who could I, you know, pull off without people just laughing at me? So I'm actually working right now on like a Daredevil cosplay, but more like a like a comic book version of, of Daredevil, which I think is pretty cool. And I also have like a Homelander suit 
that I that I tried on for me and my lady put that on for Valentine's Day. I, I put on the Homelander suit. She had Stormfront. She didn't put on the Homelander suit as well. Yeah, yeah. It was funny because we ordered it when you still didn't know that, that Stormfront was a spoiler alert. That Stormfront was a, a bad guy. So she spent like three hundred dollars on this Stormfront suit, and then and then come to find out before the end of the season's over, she's a Nazi. <laughs> So I was like, ah, that's we, we, that's hard to use that now. So Chris, last question before we play a little game. What are you most excited for in the superhero industry coming up? Oh man, I, I just, I think what I'm most excited for is, I mean, after 2020 and just not getting anything, just, just the whole wealth of stuff that, you know, both both Marvel and DC are given. I'm excited about everything. I mean, the Disney Plus and the HBO Max shows are like so like it's a game changer. I mean, I, I've I you know not to crap on the CW shows or whatever, but it's I kind of feel like now that like the show quality is 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 ramping up so high to become like movie quality. I don't know how shows like that are going to survive. But, you know, honestly, I, it just they they feel like an afterthought to me. Uh, but I'm definitely most excited about seeing all of these characters and shows intertwining the way, you know, that Disney and Warner Brothers are kind of like beefing them up to be. Everything's going to be all right. I promise. All right, Chris, we're going to do a little segment that I call This or That. I'm just going to throw out two names of heroes, uh, shows, movies, whatever, and you pick your favorite. All right? All right. All right, let's start it off with an easy one. Quicksilver or Flash? In the comic books, I'd say The Flash. So far that we've seen in live action, I would go Quicksilver with Evan Peters. That is so right. lame. Lame. All right, next one, Superman or Shazam? Superman. Yes. I, I like Shazam and I, I, love, I love Shazam, but Superman, I mean, he's you gotta go Superman. Okay, next one. Here we go. Dick Grayson or Jason Todd? Uh, I I would almost always, I don't know, I've become a real big fan of Red Hood in recent years. I think I'm going to go Jason Todd. Well, we all know that's a lie. All right, next one. Kick-Ass or The Boys? The Boys. <laughs> it, it really surprised me how much I love that show. Homelander is, I mean, he's so awful, I, but man, he's every time he's on screen, I mean, you can't help but not watch. I mean, that guy is, he is just, just supremo terrible. I just love that guy. Wow. Okay, on to the last one for this and that. Iron Man or Batman? Batman. Yeah, that was an easy one. <laughs> All right, so that does it for this and that and our interview with Chris Killian from comicbook.com. Make sure to go to Instagram and follow him at CK Comedy and follow comicbook.com for the best geek news. Chris, I really appreciate you being on the Pat Cave. Absolutely. Thanks for having me, Pat. So that does it for another episode of the Pat Cave. Hope you enjoyed our trip down memory lane and our interview with Chris Killian. So I I'm on the road to get a thousand subscribers, you guys. I'm pretty sure I'm about to hit 300, but I would really appreciate you sharing with your fellow nerds and hitting that subscribe button. And just like these rock'em sock'em pocket punchers, it'll blow my little head off.